love three plus key your favorite social worker welcome back so somebody um uh, took me up on an offer that i was talking about the other day i'll attach it the video is called church hurt get creative so in being just transparent about my journey and, and bringing you into it as well. Uh, long story short, over a series of years at this point, I have experienced church hurt and came to a point uh, a few months ago. I said, you know, I'm going to just take a step back from church attendance and, you know, try to figure it out. And so because I do have godly people around me who also show, uh, demonstrate uh, love toward me and affection, um, they discouraged stepping away entirely. Like often we do want to do, I'm never going to church again. Um, they discouraged that, right? And uh, one friend in particular said, you know, now's the time to get creative and, and figure it out. Um, and, um, the encouragement is always toward fellowship, um, finding a church home. I would encourage that for anybody at the same time, church hurt does happen. I believe it needs to be spoken about amongst other Christians um, and so in the way of me getting creative while I'm, I'm processing, uh, my next steps and, uh, what has happened and, and, and kind of like how to proceed, um, two things in the creativity of it all. Number one, I started a devotional at 6 a.m. on this channel, Monday through Friday. Um, it is, the comments are open to my subscribers, so feel free to join, uh, whether you're a su subscriber or not. 6 a.m., uh, Monday through Friday, Mountain Standard Time. The other thing is I offered a church swap. I do have a church I belong to, I am a member of, in Missoula, Montana. Um, I have proposed a church swap. So I go to your church, and then you come to you come visit my church. So today I was invited to Anchor Church. Incidentally, <laughs> there there's a podcast. There's a YouTube channel. Go follow it. It's the Missoula Podcast. And most recently they had a pastor. Well, wouldn't you know, as soon as the guy gets on stage, I'm like, oh, that's the guy from the Missoula Podcast. So um, I don't remember his name and the point, this is not an advertisement, so the point isn't to like, you know, um, talk about Anchor Church uh, uh, in, a, in a way to promote it. Um, this was just my experience. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And for that, I don't remember the pastor's name. <laughs> However, he's a dude and he's on the Missoula podcast. I encourage you to go over to that YouTube channel and um, and check it out. So um, the first thing I noticed when arriving at Anchor Church um, was a, a mixture of attire. Um, I say that for those of you, typically I wear a dress or skirt to church. It is not at all a requirement. Um, I think I have a bunch of them. And if there's a, a, ever a reason, right, um, you know, why not, why not turn up? Um, but today that's actually not what I did. I'm wearing uh, slacks and this shirt, right? Uh, women were dressed in skirts dresses or not, right? The guys were in slacks or baseball caps, um, come as you are type vibes. That was great. I was waiting for my uh, person to arrive that invited me and um, everyone passing me by said hello. It, it was common for everybody to say hello uh, and chat about the weather. 
or what have you. Um, I will say, particularly in Missoula, Montana, I am sensitive to um, cultural and racial relations. I um, am, am sensitive to whether or not I am truly welcome in a space if I'm a token, if nobody cares, or if it's hostile, right? Um, and I think that there's wisdom in that with where I live. Um, with that said, I don't think anybody cared one way or another. And I will say, uh, I tend to look around, uh, scan the room for familiar faces. Um, as far as Missoula could go, it was diverse. The The congregation was diverse. So that is for sure a plus, not only if you are not of the dominant culture and you're, and you're looking to kind of um, not be a standout. It's also important, and I've said it again and again, <laughs> if you are a part of the dominant culture, it, it, it would it's wise to bring your children, expose your children to other people who are different than them. If you look around in your spaces and everyone looks like you, um, okay, that's a choice. And I'll just put it there that that is a choice that you are making because it's 2024 and you could be among other people who are not like you and not just racially, ethnically, by religion, politics, right? It's 2024. Like it is what it is. So I appreciated that about the congregation. Uh, next, the worship. Um, I like to worship loudly. I do. Um, the singing was delightful. The first thing I said, it's a little bluegrassy. I support, if you don't know, I support bluegrass. I like the sound of bluegrass. It's a vibe. Um, you want to see people have fun? Turn on some bluegrass. I'm, I'm not opposed. So the first song was that. And then we got into more um, kind of traditional songs and um it was a vibe I wanted to turn to the person next to me and be like "Ooh, it's kind of like Mariah Carey-ish like the singer was singing the singer was singing um another thing you know how some people like you know pray you know raise their hand or or whatever sometimes I have found in churches everybody's doing the raise their hand thing me personally I'm not a raise the hander. And that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, right? But if everybody else is doing it, I'm like, oh, um, and I'll stay and there's nothing wrong with it. That's not what I'm saying. It's just um, a particular act that can make you stand out if everybody's doing it. Likewise, if you're a hander, if you're, oh, Lord, if you're that type and nobody's doing it and you're doing it, uh, you might feel out of place too. I would say then there was a, a good mixture of handers, people, you know how we do, just kind of stand there, singers, me, I'm kind of like a dancer. <laughs> it's a vibe. I'm kind of a dancer to the, to the worship time. Um, and so all in all worship music, I was, I was with that too. Um, the babies. Pl plenty of cute babies. At one point, there was a baby clapping when everybody else was clapping. I I told I had to pull that lady aside afterward. I said, "Your baby's a vibe. I'm with it. If they're selling anything, I want ten of them." Okay. So all in all, the people, the music, um, terrific. So what was the sermon about? It was about anxiety. Um. The main verse, which um, was the context for the sermon, I will read right quick. It was Matthew 30 through 34, and, uh, and that is, uh, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? you of little faith. 
So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And so the pastor went on to um, talk about how anxiety is the new normal, but the new normal is broken and it's not uh, God's will. I really... I really love that. So how things were, I mean, if you envision it, the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam and Eve, that was what this was all supposed to be like. Um, And then it went left, right? And that's another story for another time. If you don't know how it went left, hit up Genesis first book in the Bible, first book in the Word, and you and you'll see. Um, but God's creation is perfect. His design is perfect. How we experience things in 2024, baby. We are depressed, worried, anxious, mean, and grumpy, selfish, greedy. That wasn't the uh, original um, design. It certainly is the new normal. Um, but we need to remember that's not really God's will. How things are today, it's it's broken. We are uh, living in a sinful world. And so then there's a lot of um, hurt, right? Um, Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. So we all know somebody who is upset, worried, they're going through this and that. What what is what is, what is your place in that? How do you um approach that situation, right? Um I'm not here to to tell you anything. You can watch my other videos. I certainly do, right? Um but you know, words as sweet as a a honeycomb go a long way, friend. Uh, come alongside people and um and and bear their burdens with them is is definitely what I would say. When you come across somebody that's expressing some type of anxiety or anxiousness. Next we went into First Thessalonians three, ten through twelve, which says, As we pray most earnestly, night and day, that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you. Come alongside your neighbor in, in their worries and, and provide care for them. Uh, one thing that was stated that I loved, participate in God's provision. Right, <laughs> like the Lord will give you what you need. But let's say, just say, he has for you something in abundance, right? He provided you, you say, oh Lord, I want a house. Okay, so maybe he didn't give you the house, but he did give you um, wood and I don't know, y'all, <laughs> you'll have to help me. I don't know how to make a house, oh, wood and... I don't know, nails, you get the point. Even so, he connected you with a builder, right? There's a, there's a, there's a builder in your midst. Could be your mailman, could be somebody at your own church, whatever, right? But the Lord provided for you. There is wisdom and discernment and strength, internal strength, right? And will of your own uh, to participate in the, in, in the Lord's provision for you to recognize opportunities that the Lord has put in front of you. Uh, next, we went to John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. 
in the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Go to Christ. Go to Christ. Um, if you know, you know. So the Holy Spirit will give you peace. You can ask him for peace um, and he'll give it to you. It'll wash right over you. Not everyone has experienced that sensation. And so I, I think it's fair to be doubtful that that can happen. <laughs> I, I think that's fair, right? Because you haven't experienced it. So I do want to say the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Father, Christ, um, he is real. If you would like to experience that type of peace, peace, call out to the Lord, um, plead with him, you know, help, help my own unbelief. Let your peace wash over me. I mean, what, what do you have to lose? You know what I mean? Like, so you ask for peace and then you, and then, and then you get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, um, or not, you know, do you boo? Do you? Uh, let's see here. Today's grace is for today. Faith is believing that the Lord will be here tomorrow. That was a note the pastor went on about. And I really, I really love that. It reminded me of, um, the Lord's prayer today. Give, give me today your, your daily bread or uh, new mercies come in the morning. So today the Lord is addressing our our worries, our depression, our our um, heavy hearts. Tomorrow, new day. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be over here. But the Lord, the Lord is trying to address you in this moment, give you fresh grace, fresh mercy, fresh warm bread. For today. If you're hungry, you're hungry right now. Tomorrow, you may you may eat again, right? But how does worrying about your food tomorrow help your empty belly, your famished soul today, right now? The Lord is good. Focus on the Lord right now. Focus on what the Lord can give you. The Holy Spirit is doing within you right now, today. Tomorrow will still be there, okay? Today's grace is for today. Faith is believing that the Lord will be here tomorrow. Get this done today. Tomorrow, he'll still be there, baby. Lamentations 3, 19 through 25. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. The Lord is my inheritance, not the world. That's on my rope. <laughs> It stopped. The last the last of the verse was, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. The pastor went on to say, the Lord is my inheritance, not the world, not sickness, not depression, not worry, not anxiety. The Lord is my inheritance. This is where I place my hope. Baby, this is this is three plus key talking to you. I know you're going through it. That was the whole point of this sermon. We're all going through it. <laughs> you want to focus on the saddy pants of it all? You want to focus, hone in on that depression, on, on that anxiety? 
how is that serving you? I'm being for real. How is that, that, how is that serving you? The Lord is your inheritance. You know what comes with the Lord? Love, gentleness, peace, joy. And it's one of those things. It's like, if you know, you know. But a point might come. I'm talking maybe to an, an unbeliever right now. A point may come where you're sick and tired. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're on the floor. Sometimes um, as, uh, as a social worker, right? Somebody um, comes into my office and they're on their worst day. They have kids. They just left a DV situation. So they have no money. They have no home. They have nothing. And they have a baby to feed. So it's only a matter of time before CPS gets involved and now they, they don't have a child. What do you think is about to, right? You're the lowest. So what I do, I get them, we do a, a an exercise. I'm a very hands-on person. Have them touch the floor. I say, you might be right here. You might be right here on the floor. You can't go any lower. You're at that moment in your life. Got it. Noted. Here's the blessing. Since you're at the rock bottom, all there is is to go up. Let me take it to the believers. All there is is to go up. Look up. Look up. At some point, it's just kind of like you can focus on. I feel all this. This all this is going on, and I get it. I'm not even trying to take away from that. That sucks, right? So what? What do you have to lose? Even if you're like, oh, the Lord, the Christians, they're so judgmental and all this. Okay. You know, do you think maybe you could, you could be different? Do you think maybe you could be a non-judgmental Christian, right? Do you think maybe, right, you accept the Lord into your heart and you already being a non-judgmental person, now you're a non-judgmental person that loves the Lord. Don't. Don't you think that's a wonderful thing? And you have peace. So then you can go alongside others who may be, who other Christians, let's be honest, other Christians might be judging this type of person, but you're non-judgmental and you have the Lord backing you now and you go to them. Now, now you're, you, you, that doesn't change. Being a Christian doesn't make you, a judgmental person, I'm going to say it. Don't get mad at me, Christians. You were already a judgmental person. And then you became a Christian, maybe. You gave yourself, you gave your life to the Lord. So you love him, but you now use him to judge others. Sound familiar, anybody? I mean, so I'm just saying... Sometimes, you know, you might just be a kind person. You don't like all that extra stuff, the uh, uh, stereotypes that come with other Christians. Great. Call out to the Lord and then and then move forward in, in, in kindness and, and, and share the, the love of the Lord with others, too. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, actually, <laughs> baby, that's what that's what is that's what is supposed to be. <laughs> Anyway, I, I, I digress, but um, today was wonderful. Um, I want to encourage you if you if you made it to the end of the end of this, um, I would love to swap churches. I would love to swap churches with you. I would love to go to your church. Um, and so and then right then then you then you come to my home church and. Um, and it's a vibe, like, let's move forward in that. Again, uh, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, devotionals, comments open to my subscribers. Um, one more time, the church I went to was Anchor Church in Missoula, Montana, and you can catch the pastor on the Missoula podcast, which is another YouTube channel, so go subscribe to them. And uh, I'm three plus key, your favorite social worker. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. 
this video. I'll talk to you later.